Hey there, creative friends. Get ready for your daily dose of sunshine as we dive into a world of art and reviews. Today, we're looking at another pencil direct from Germany. Today's pencil comes from a brand famous for grey leads and with a history of innovation in the art world. This brand isn't just technical pencils and greys though, as they have become the largest European manufacturer of wood cased pencils and apparently, much to my surprise, a major manufacturer of coloured pencils. Say hello to these coloured pencils from Stadler. The Germans must know their stationery with so many world famous pencils coming from such a small area. I know the Stadler grey leads very well and I can't wait to see how these coloured pencils hold up to our rigorous testing regime. Let's get started shall we? First up, let's have a look at the physical side of these pencils. For testing today, I have the 24 coloured pencil pack from Stadler. Like many pencils, it arrives in a tin. My initial thoughts are that there's a lot of green and a lot of blue on the cover. So much that nothing really pops out. Top left is Stadler's primary branding, which is the blue Mars head logo. There is a clear and nicely sized colour swatch bar at the bottom of the tin, which is always an excellent addition. Opening the tin, it's a super light tin, possibly the lightest I've reviewed yet. And there really is no excess in this kit between the pencils. It's all very compact. Inside, the pencils sit very nicely and all together make a very pleasant sight. Because they are a hexagonal pencil, they sit very securely in the tin. This is also helped by the fact that the molded plastic tray here is very deep. Even with a couple of pencils missing, this tin should be secure enough to stop your pencils bouncing about. These pencils are surprisingly elegant, although they seem a bit thinner and lighter than what I'm used to with what I would consider an artist grade pencil. I'm not sure if this will make much of a difference though, because they appear to be very comfortable. I'm not super into the hexagonal shape, but that's definitely a personal preference. I guess we'll have to see how they hold up. On the Stadler website, there is actually a lot of stuff. I'm referring to it as stuff because there is so many pencils and art supplies, it's easy to get lost. Under the coloured pencils section, it's not until we get to page three that I'm able to see the pencils I have here. Stadler lists them by number and apparently this is the 146C pencil range. Unfortunately, that's not on the tin cover. Spoiler alert, when we take a closer look at the pencils in a few minutes, the 146C is printed on the side. In this range, we have the set of 12, 24, 48, and 72. Looking at the details of these pencils, Stadler has a good amount of information available and bright, clear swatches for what is in the kit, which is excellent. They also have a fair bit of information on the environmental aspects of the pencil and interestingly, sharpening recommendations for each pencil range. These pencils are an elegant hexagonal design. Some people like round, some people like hexagonal. This is all personal preference. Stadler's pencil casings are made out of PEFC certified wood sourced from sustainably managed forests. The length of the overall pencil is 172 millimeters from tip to tail and the diameter is a thinner than usual 7.5 millimeters. This is an oil-based pencil with the core coming in at 3.8 millimeters. The design of the pencil is quite classic and elegant, if thin. Texturally, it's quite sleek. Even with the angled sides, it feels nice. One side of the pencil is stamped with silver and the other printed with white. The silver side has stamped made in Germany, followed by the Mars head and the word Stadler. The other side has the white printed barcode, followed by a mysterious collection of text, which I assume is batch and run number followed by Art NR and the pencil range name followed by the pencil colour. This is the only place I can spot the 146C that indicates the range. Interestingly, I wasn't able to find these pencils sold separately, so why they have a barcode printed on them, I can't guess. The pencil has a curved shaped end which feels like it's one piece with the pencil paint. It's seamless and pleasant to touch. I also like how each pencil is covered in its colour from tip to toe and from what I can tell appears to match the colour of the core relatively closely. With these Stadler pencils, I'm not particularly excited by them, but neither am I displeased by their look and design. They're very simple in design, which is nice, but there is a lot of random text and a barcode that I guess really wouldn't be of any interest to anyone but the people at the factory. They do seem of a much higher quality than what I was expecting. 
While the packaging isn't super fancy, it still looks pleasant and pleasing without a lot of bells and whistles. The swatch is excellent, but the rest of it really has nothing that makes it stand out. It definitely feels much nicer than a basic kit, but it lacks the wow factor other kits offer. However, we do not want to judge a book by its cover. The important thing is how they perform. So let's see how these humble little pencils go, shall we? So that's the physical side of our Stedler pencils. Next, we're gonna do a series of tests, some of which are a little bit sciencey, others which are more about the feel of the pencils. Now, because we can't test all the pencils in these packs, I'm going to pick four colors from each kit, plus our black and a white. We'll run our tests on each pencil and we'll see what we can see. The colors I have today are red, 146C-2, green, 146C-50, blue, 146C-30, yellow, 146C-1, white, 146C-0, and black, 146C-9. With saturation and vibrancy, I want to know how saturated and how bright these pencils can get. What I'm looking at for this test is consistency. To me, if a pencil is able to remain consistent over different steps up of pressure, then that's a sign of a good pencil. The way I'm going to do this test is by drawing with our pencils at different weights. Today, we're using five different pressures, 25 grams, 50 grams, 100 grams, 200 grams, and 400 grams. So very light to very heavy. The Stadler Coloured Pencils 146C are described as oil-based pencils, and that took a lot to find out. Stadler is very cagey about their lead ingredients. All the site states is soft lead for a wide range of dry techniques in bright colours. Oil is traditionally harder than wax, so how that can be soft must be one of those secrets they won't tell us. All right, then you keep your secrets, Stadler. These are my very scientific scales that we'll be using for this test. Just keep in mind that they are kitchen scales, so the measurements might move around a bit. Also, I'm just using basic 120 GSM mixed media white paper for these tests. So let's go see what happens. We're gonna start off today with our red pencil. Now I'm going to be drawing nice and lightly for this 25 gram here because it's quite a light weight. But so far, the saturation at the 25 gram in the red looks pretty good. Let's try the green now. And that also looks pretty good, to be honest. While it is a lot lighter than the red, it is what I would expect from a 25 gram pencil. And it's quite a nice green as well. Now for our blue, how big a saturation are we going to get here in our blue? That's pretty good. 25 grams, remember, is quite a light weight. So I'm not expecting them to be super vibrant and saturated at this point here. The yellow is a little bit hard to see. Uh, sometimes I've found with this pigment, it can be really tricky to see at this lighter weight. And now for our black, which has a nice saturation of color there for a 25 gram of weight. Considering it's only 25 grams, these pencils have performed great so far. Let's step things up a little now into our 50 gram. So I'm expecting these to be twice as bright as the 25 gram. And the 50 gram in the red, I would say is living up to that expectation. How about our green? It definitely has gone up a little bit, maybe 75% rather than 100% up in saturation and vibrancy there. The blue is coming in strong. I would say that's at least a doubling of saturation and vibrancy in the 50 grams. And how's our yellow going to go? Can we see it now? We can definitely see the yellow much stronger than it was before. But again, I don't think that's 100% of an increase, maybe a 50% increase there. The black is similar. I would say that's only a 50% increase as well. Okay, now for the fun one. I really like the 100 grams because this is where the pencils start to really rev up and we can see the saturation and vibrancy as it might look when we use these pencils. The red has stepped it up at least 100% more in the vibrancy and saturation there, which is fantastic to see. Let's have a little look at our green now. I reckon that has doubled in saturation and vibrancy. It's a lot brighter and more saturated than it was before. 
For our blue, I'd say we've got about a 100% increase in saturation. The blue looks great, even if I did draw outside the lines a little bit here. The yellow and black, however, they're just kind of not moving all that much. And the increase in saturation is minuscule. I would say maybe 25% increase for both of these colors. Okay, 200 grams. Now, obviously I'm expecting these saturations to be at least twice as good as the 100 gram saturation and vibrancy. The red is still going up less so than I would have hoped at this stage, but the green is not really letting go. We're getting a whole step up in saturation and vibrancy from the green. How about our blue? The blue is, it's definitely going up, but it's less consistent than it has been previously. Let's see about that infamous yellow and black. Are we having any luck with them at all? I don't feel like we've gone up all that much in the yellow. And what about the black now? And not a huge amount of an increase in the black either. While it may seem in these individual weights that the pencils aren't getting all that much saturated from weight to weight, if we have a look at it as a whole now from 25 to 50 gram to 100 gram to 200 gram, we can see there's actually quite a consistent amount of saturation and vibrancy building up over those weights. While the saturation isn't like an intense saturation every single time we step up, it's still an obvious step towards a more saturated pencil. And I think that's an important thing for us to remember here because these pencils, they're not super saturated pencils, but they are incredibly consistent pencils, which is actually a mark of a really great pencil. Interestingly, in this heavier saturation at the 400 gram, we do have another step up in our saturation and vibrancy. Pretty much all of our colors here, actually all of our colors here, I would say have doubled in saturation and vibrancy. So perhaps this just means with these pencils, we need to be a little bit tougher to get the saturation and vibrancy that we want. We're actually going to be testing the white pencil in this one today, and we're doing exactly the same thing as we did before. We're going to try our 25 gram here, which at this stage is quite light and heading into the 50 gram here. And that's definitely an increase in saturation and vibrancy, very similar in steps so far to what our colors were. And 100 grams definitely is again, a step up in vibrancy and saturation. And the 200 grams, Again, that's a huge increase in saturation and vibrancy. I think the key with these ones is perhaps it's not 100% of an increase, more of a 50% of an increase, but they are a very consistent increase nevertheless. Looking at the whole test now, we can see that it's actually a very consistent saturation and vibrancy. These pencils are actually surprisingly pretty awesome. They're super consistent in the red and the green with the blue and yellow and black not far behind. I try really hard to keep my assumptions about art supplies out of these reviews, so I'm not biased in the results, but I did not expect these pencils to do as well as they have. I'm suitably impressed. They are vibrant, excellent color saturation, and they step down nicely between the weights. White, not so much. Realistically, it lost a lot of vibrancy at the lighter weights, but that's to be expected with an oil-based white. Handling wise, I'm not super into the hexagonal shape as I do find it a bit uncomfortable in the heavy weights. I feel that the shape would start to cause issues in longer projects. For me, that is. You may love that angular feeling in your hand. They are obviously a harder pencil than others we have reviewed, that being the Holbein and the Polychromos, but they are not scratchy. It feels very similar to coloring with a gray lead. On our scale of A to F, with S being superb, Let's look at how these five colors perform together and aggregate them based on the pressure test. I'm giving the Stadler pencils a very strong B. So the Stadler sits about here. The next test for us is the single pencil gradient. Here we are taking each of our pencils and making a gradient. Sounds simple, it is, but it's important. This test is an exercise in working from heavy to light. The easier the pencil is to control as we pull off the pressure, the more tonal differences we can see as we move through different weights. So how will the Stadler pencils gradient? Let's go see, shall we? It's time to get our gradient on. So a good gradient has a really smooth transition from a heavy weight to a light weight. And that's what I'm trying to emulate today. 
is we're trying to create a lovely smooth gradient with our Stadler pencils. I've started off in the red, so we've started with a nice heavy weight and we're slowly pulling off the pressure as you would in a car, like the accelerator of a car. And slowly but surely, we're getting less and less into that lighter weight. If we first up take a look at our red gradient, we can see that that's a pretty nice gradient. Followed by our green here, there is a little bit of stepping between the heavy weight in the green and the medium weight. There's a little step off, but otherwise the gradient's really smooth. Similarly in the blue here, we've got a little bit of a step off from that heavy weight into the medium weight, but we're getting the full spectrum of heavy to light within these gradients, which is fantastic. Let's see how our yellow gradient goes. This can often be a more forgiving gradient because the yellow pigment can be a little bit harder to see. And there is a tiny little bit of a step there from the heavy weight to the lighter weights, but we are getting still that full spectrum of heavy to light. And for our black, that's a relatively smooth gradient as well. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with how each of these gradients represent every single weight with a nice smooth transition between them. Now let's do the same thing with the white pencil. Now this is gonna be a very interesting gradient because white shows everything. So every single pressure we go through, we're going to see straight away whether this pencil struggles or not. So far, so good. We've got all of our heavy weights in the white and slowly we're starting to take off our pressure. So far, so good. It's quite smooth in this transition from heavy to light. And I would say that's a pretty good gradient. Right, so these pencils gradient really well. We have a full spectrum in pressure across the board some colors weren't as smooth as others. The green and the blue have a slight drop off in the top end, but it's very slight. But mostly I'm impressed with how Stadler have performed here. The white did fairly well. It doesn't have a great deal of depth in the heavy weights, but I suspect that may be due to being a harder pencil. The only thing that lets the Stadler pencils down in this test is the pencil feel. The lead is a little bit scratchy and doesn't glide very well when I'm lifting the pressure. Okay, let's aggregate our six pencils and work out where they sit on our scale. The Stadler pencils receive an excellent A- minus in the single pencil gradient. I would have marked it higher if they were a little bit smoother in the feel. And that puts the gradients for the Stadler just about there. For this test, I want to see if we can blend colors together. What I wanna see is a nice smooth blend between colors and colors mixing together rather than sitting on top of each other. For this test, we're matching our primary colors, red to green and blue to yellow. Let's see how they hold up. Let's get this blending test started with our red pencil. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a red gradient as smoothly as I can. And as we know, creating a gradient is the process of going from hard to light pressures. Unfortunately, my red gradient so far isn't that great, but that's okay. Let's start with our green now. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going from the bottom. So with our green, we're going as hard as we can. And as we bring it up to meet the red, what we want to see here is a mixing or a blending of the two colors. Unfortunately, these colors haven't really blended. They're more sitting on top of each other. Let's try with the blue and the yellow now. That blue gradient is actually quite nice. This is a much nicer gradient. And then we're going to do the same thing with our yellow, going from the bottom, coming up to the middle to meet the blue color. What I'm hoping for at this point is a nice smooth blend between the yellow and the blue. However, I don't think we're going to get it. The colors aren't blending together and the transition from one color to the next is quite jagged. For a pencil that gradients so well, these pencils simply don't blend very well at all. The blend from one color to the next is quite stilted and jarring. Instead of mixing together smoothly, the colors have remained fairly separate. The interesting part here is that where the colors meet, the blending between the colors is really poor. I feel like the pigment isn't transitioning into the other color well at all. It just seems like each color is working against the other almost just sitting on top of each other, which is not what we want at all. I suspect this is because they have a harder core and whatever the mix they're adding to the oil 
to give that soft lead, they may need to add a little bit more. Unfortunately, for our grading here, I'm going to grade the Stadler a very poor D for our blending test. So that's gonna put our Stadlers about here on our scale. It's time for the white factor. This test shows us what happens when we introduce our white pencil to our blended colors. Will it sit on top? Will it smooth and blend our already not great blend? Will it lighten our colors to new heights and amazing shades? So let's go see how the white goes. Let's start off our white test today with our white pencil going over our colors. So I'm going to push as hard as I can in the red and green area here. On one side, we have the white inside. On the other side, we have the non-white inside, so we can see the difference. We can see here that the white pencil is actually doing something. It's lightened and blended that red especially. Let's have a little look at the yellow and the blue side now. Will we see much of a difference in this color range? We definitely don't see as much of a change as in the red and the green, whereas it's kind of blended and lightened a little bit. That red color, it definitely hasn't made as much of an effect in the blue and the yellow. So obviously the Stadler white pencil isn't super strong. Like the blend isn't mixing well, the white isn't mixing overly well either. However, I feel like the addition of the white is blending the colors together better than they were before, which being as poor as it was, is an improvement. It's still not great, but I think it's helping smooth that awful blend in the middle, just enough to actually make the white worth the effort of blending over the top. For a not great, but an improvement on our blend test, I'm giving the Stadler White Factor a grade of a solid C. And that's going to put our Stadler right about here for the White Factor. In this test, I want to try and find out whether the colour advertised on the outside of the pencils, being the colour of the barrel, actually matches the colour that the pencil's putting down. There is nothing quite as frustrating when you grab a pencil thinking it's one color and then suddenly it's putting down a color that's completely different. For this test, I'm bringing in each pencil and putting it next to the gradient we created earlier. We are just going to compare them by eye to see how accurate the colors are. Let's go take a look. First up, we're gonna take a little look at our red. And to be perfectly honest, the pigment it's putting down compared to the barrel is spot on. Next, we've got our green, which again is so similar. Our blue is so close. The yellow is sunshiny, dare I say. Our black is a little bit off, but overall, this is wonderful color accuracy. So to my eye, the Stadler colored pencils are actually really wonderfully color matched. The colors are very close to their corresponding color on the barrel. Not perfect, but very close. For a pencil in this range, the fact Stadler has taken such pains to make them as close as possible is a really good indication that they care about what they produce. Everyone will see these colors differently because it's really subjective to how our eyes view color. For me, I'm going to give the Stadler an excellent score of an A minus. Feel free to let me know in the comments below if you think it's a different color match. So for colour accuracy, our Stadler goes right about here. It's time for my favourite test, the break test. It's going to be a very interesting one this time because Stadler state that they use a soft lead. But being that it's an oil-based lead and most of the tests we've just done have shown it's a fairly hard lead, how they're going to perform here, I have no idea. To do this, I'm going to put pressure on the Stadler pencil until the lead of the pencil snaps. This test is important because it tells us a few things. How hard the lead actually is, and when we look at the six pencils, how consistent they are across the range. So how much pressure before the Stadler breaks? 
To make this test as consistent as possible across all the pencils we're going to review, I've set up a couple of controls. I'm going to sharpen each pencil to a point. I'm then going to dull them slightly by drawing three lines at pressure. Basically, this will make sure we don't have a super fine point that will break immediately. I'm then going to be using a 45 degree square to get a consistent angle of pressure. Makes sense? Let's go break some leads. Whenever I commentate for this test, I always feel like I'm a sports presenter or a sports commentator, and I'm reading the results of everything happening at the time because it is that fast and furious and fascinating. We're setting up our red straight away and we're building up the pressure. We've got our 45 degree angle, starting it off light and slowly building it up. We are already over 800 grams, which is massive and snap. That broke at one kilogram, 159 grams. That is huge. Time for our green now. Will we have the same result from the green as we got from the red? Because the red was very impressive. All right, setting up our 45 degree angle and let's go. Building, oh my gosh, that only snapped at 458. That contrast between the green and the red is massive. Let's get started with the blue. We're just setting it up by dashing off the tip of our blue pencil. And it's gonna be interesting to see where our blue pencil is going to fit. Is it going to be high like our red pencil or will it be lower like the green pencil? And here we go. We've set up the 45 degree angle and go. Oh my gosh, 616 grams. That's pretty smack bang in the middle. The yellow is always really interesting because it is such an unusual pigment. Sometimes it can be really hard. Sometimes it can be really soft. It just depends on the pencil. Here we go. Starting to build up the pressure now. Over 800, 900. And that snapped at 935 grams. So we've headed up high again in the yellow. All right, let's see how our black goes. Let's set it up with its 45 degree angle. So slowly we are building, slowly, slowly, slowly. 642, that is a lot closer to the blue than any other color, which is curious because I've sometimes found the black to be really, really hard and at other times quite soft. Let's see how our white goes. And here we go. And that happened quite quickly at 819 grams. Stadler, that was not a good result. If we average the six pencils out, we get an average break point of 772 grams. That's pretty close to the polychromos in break point and not too hard nor too soft. But when we look at them individually, these pencils are all over the place. They do terribly from a break point of over 1.1 kilograms for the red to a break point of 458 grams for the green, these results are very, very inconsistent. For fans of these pencils who disagree with these results, with tests like this, there are a lot of variables. I've tried very hard to keep my testing the same with the same angle and the same sharpness for all kits but there are always a lot of reasons these pencils may have done so badly. It could be the batch, they may have been damaged in transit, the heat, the cold, or simply because I did something wrong. In a fair and just world, we'd do this test a hundred times with a hundred different kits from a hundred different sources and average them all out. But being a poor artist who pays for these pencils out of her own pocket, that ain't gonna happen. Unless of course Stadler wants to send me those 100 kits and maybe a car or a boat as well as that. <laughs> anyway, these are the pencils we have and these are the results that we got. So for this reason, I'm giving Stadler a woeful D minus result here. And so sadly, these ones are going all the way down here. For my final test, I want to know if these pencils spark joy or cause despair. This test is purely based on my personal opinion and the vibe I've gotten from the Stadler pencils. Honestly, I'm more impressed with these pencils than I thought I was going to be. I don't talk about price point primarily because different pencils cost different prices in different countries and weighting our results to price would only apply here in Australia. 
But that said, I always assumed that these pencils, while not budget, were something that was only just one step above budget. But while they are not the most awesome pencils ever, they are far above budget pencils. In many of our tests, they have performed average, but in a couple, they have far exceeded expectations. The gradient test, for example, was outstanding, and so too was the color accuracy. As an artist pencil, I feel they are lacking a bit, being let down by the lack of consistency and honestly by the shape of the pencil. Again, I personally struggle with the hexagonal shapes due to longevity, but again for a hexagonal shape, they are very pleasing to the eye and texturally feel silky smooth. It's a hexagon, but a nice hexagon. Looking at it, I also feel there's a bit too much unnecessary stuff on the sides of the pencil, particularly if what's there makes no real sense to the user. But for someone who is a casual artist who wants a genuinely decent pencil, which might be slightly cheaper than others, they are actually pretty perfect. Stadler, you did well, and your pencils do indeed spark joy. I'm going to give you a score here of a B minus. So we're just gonna pop in your joy factor just here, Stadler. Okay, so I need to give Stadler an overall mark. To do this, I'm going to average all the results and go from there. So drum roll. Overall, Stadler colored pencils receive a solid and respectable C+. Currently, it is sitting on the bottom of our testing, but that's not to say that these are bad pencils. We've just been doing some of the best first. Okay, everyone, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Stadler pencils. Let me know in the comments below if there's something I've missed or if you disagree with my findings. I've got more pencils up my sleeve to show you. And speaking of which, keep your eyes out for next week's episode where we'll be looking at some pencils that are woodless. The Progresso colored pencils from Koei Noor. If you want to see more of my face in the meantime, have a look around at the links and feel free to come hang out with us on Twitch. That's all folks, have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.